So welcome everyone to our November Andela webinar. How to waste a remote technical interview for an industry leading company. But before we begin, I just want to do some housekeeping regarding our community guidelines. First, treat others as you would like to be treated in real life, despite this being a, 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 an online event, uh, we, we treat ourselves with respect and as we are in real life. Be tolerant towards others' opinions, respectfully disagree when opinions do not align, respect the privacy and personal information of other members and participants. Communicate with courtesy and respect. Do not make sure make, make personal attacks on other community members. Use defamatory remarks or make false statements against others. Post prejudiced uh, comments or profanity. Bully or make inflammatory remarks to other community members. Any of those actions will not be tolerated and immediate action will be taken. Please report any behavior of this type. Having said that, uh, please use the chat tool to make questions or comments to our panelists. It's open and we'll be monitoring it. We will be happy to answer as many questions as we can. Right now, let's go to the to the agenda. <clears throat> I'm going to be stealing a few minutes of your precious time to talk a bit about Andela, then just a quick intro about our panelists. And then we're just gonna to go through the content that uh, brought us all, all of us together. And at the end, we will have some time for Q&A uh, for any of the questions that you may uh, uh, ask using the chat tool or the question or the Q&A uh, uh, tool. I'm gonna be talking about a bit about Umbella. We're a marketplace to connect great companies with better talent. We are backed by top venture capitalist firm that are helping us to fulfill our mission to connect brilliance with opportunity. We are trusted by leading brands such as GitHub, Cloudflare, Logitech, among others, and by learning partners of the size and cloud of Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. They are helping us to fulfill our mission, which is connecting brilliance with opportunities, irrespective of race, gender, and geography, offering long-term opportunities, networking, learning initiatives, compensation, and career coaching, at, and flexibility. Our career opportunities listed in our platform are engagements for over 18 months, uh, 40, hours per, 40 hours per week, hand by hand with your core engineering team. You will be fully embedded and you will be part of the team that you will be working with. And especially you will be, you will be uh, 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 <clears throat> presented with opportunities that are time zone aligned. Joining the Aldela Talent Network is a clear and comprehensive path of three simple steps, yet challenging enough. An English proficiency test, a problem solving, theoretical knowledge, and soft skills assessment, and a consultative call with one of our experts for optimizing your profile. Go to andela.com and click the join button to get started. And now, let me introduce you with our fine speakers. Today, we have the pleasure of having an amazing set of panelists. Uh, and I'll start by briefly introducing Gabby. She's the head of talent acquisition here at Andela. She will be running uh, and moderating, uh, she will be moderating uh, today, leading the conversation with Maria and Joao. Maria is a technical project manager for Andela. She will give, she will give us her point of view interviewing candidates, and Joao Ferreira is part of the Andela's Talent Network and is a software engineer at Foursquare, working fully remotely from Brazil, providing us his insights and experience while being interviewed. But without further ado, let's welcome Gabi, Maria, and Joao. With, with a warm Yay. round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, Oscar. <so sad. laughs> Thank you. Uh, wow, so I'm Gabby, uh, Marie and Joan, I think we can just like take one minute to introduce ourselves uh, to give a little bit of more context to all the folks. Uh, so I'm Gabby, I'm from Brazil, this is my accent, I know, uh, and I've been living in Canada for a couple of years, I'm currently the head of talent acquisition, so I have a team taking care, like 
searching in the internet, finding great talent and inviting them to be part of our marketplace. So feel free to reach out to me after the call to, to talk about that if you want. And I've been working with tech recruitment and interviews, um, interviews especially since 2009. So I hope I can help somehow in this conversation. And Maria, I would love to hear a little bit about you. Thank you, Gabby. Well, my name is Maria. Now you will hear my accent. I am from Argentina. Uh, I am a technical account matcher uh, here at Andela. I've been in the IT industry for more than 10 years. Uh, my job basically here is to connect talents with the clients um, and make sure that we get great opportunities for both talents and clients. Uh, so I'll be more than happy to, to talk today with you and, and help you, give you tips and, well, happy with everything that you need to, to be able to join our beautiful network, which is a great network, um, and get jobs and opportunities for all of you. Joao, your turn. Hey, I'm John from Brazil, still in Brazil. Uh, not willing to leave Brazil and working remotely to Foursquare now by Andela. And uh, I'm proud to be uh, also a husband and father, very satisfied to the, the position Andela helped me to, to reach this year. It's my first year working remotely, and it's been a great experience working for a international for an international company. Uh, in my lot of free time, I uh, I run a community to help more beginners to achieve their their expectations for their careers too. And uh, I like to, to make that thing of teaching voluntarily uh, stuff for people just for fun, just to be amazed by others' brilliance because it's a, a really great experience. That's nice. Thanks, Joao. Um, even later, if you want to share the link too about your uh, community, that's awesome. Uh, but I'll just like take the comment about accent because I know I made that comment. I, maybe I am self-conscious about my accent, but one of the things um, that I think we were cu curious to learn more about is how you do. I, we have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, we prepared some topics, but now that we talked about the accent, I'd like to jump into directly that topic. Uh, we will talk about preparing for interviews, remote interviews and all that. But I'd like to know from both of you, because you're both Spanish speaker, Portuguese speaker, is speaking English. Uh, is there any special tips or meditation or whatever that you can do when you are interviewing or talking, speaking your second language? Do you want me to start, Joao? No, no, go ahead. Sure. Um, well, yes, actually, uh, we need to use some other tools. You know, we are not native in English, and many times it makes us difficult to, to try to follow a full conversation or understand some specific words or try to communicate in the way that we want to do it in our native language. So um, what I usually advise to all the, the candidates that I'm working with, um, and many of those candidates are afraid of, of the English uh, interview, is to practice, practice at home practice before the interview, put in front of a mirror, uh, try to present himself in front of the mirror and uh, try to you know, answer the typical questions that all interviewers are going to ask, like, tell me about your experience, what do you do, tell me about yourself, uh, 
stress to try to practice a lot and you will sound more natural when you are in front of your interviewer. Um, don't try to complicate yourself using difficult words or words that you don't know how to use them. Try to make it simple. Go to the point. Speak slowly. Don't try to rush because that won't help. And relax. That's very important. You have to relax. Otherwise, the other people will tell that you're very nervous and that you cannot communicate well. I don't know, Joao, if you have something else to share from your experience. I'm giving some English classes currently, and I always, uh, I always say you can, uh, we have, we always have that uh, automatic self conversation in the mind. Uh, some people don't have it, but it's a little rare. Uh, most of us have this uh, thinking of conversation in our minds all the time. When you are doing this, try to translate it. Con uh, talk to yourself in another language. When you are imagining what you're going to say, try to, to imagine in English. Try to go buy a bread in English. Try to imagine your real life, uh, how that would go if you need to, to live in English in all the situations you are. But I think there is a, a as a teacher, I love to make distinctions. There is a distinction that I think it's in, important to, to, to emphasize that is you don't have to improve your accent. You need to improve the correct pronunciation. That's not exactly a problem, a matter of accent. Some, some people in some countries are actually proud of having accent of their countries. You shouldn't be embarrassed of having a, an accent. You just need to care about uh, expressing correctly the words so people don't get confused about what you're saying because uh, sometimes we are we are we are drive drove to to say some phonemes is, is that correct to say phonemes some phonemes in uh, in our own language instead of pronoun pronouncing that in, in the English pronunciation way. So it can make the other person completely confusing about what you're saying. You are talking about three, the number, or three, the, the, that object, that vegetable, <laughs> and they don't know what you are talking about. That is the point, not exactly caring oh, they will realize I'm not a native speaker. That's not a problem. Uh, and other important thing uh, is that the English speakers are, uh, they, they value when you are trying. They will not uh, try to embarrass you. They're, they're not gonna bite you. They are, uh, they, they appreciate you are trying to speak their language. Because it's not an easy task. If you are trying to do that, you are great. You are doing a great thing. So feel great if you are learning to, to speak, if you are able to make a conversation, even a small conversation or a simple conversation, you should feel proud of it, not embarrassed or concerned about your mistakes. If you make a mistake, the people in front of you will try to help you. They don't want to destroy you. They want your success too. Yeah, that's a great point. And even uh, the accent uh, specifically from the hiring process perspective, talking from the hiring team perspective that I, I, I can today. Um, in Andela, for instance, we actually have trainings and guidance to the interviewers in order to differentiate communication struggles to accent struggles. Because, you know, 
for me, for instance, it's very easy to understand the Latin accent because that's my accent, but other regions more difficult to me. And as an interviewer, I need to differentiate that. So I make sure I'm not rejecting someone because of accent, because for sure there's no shame and that's not, it's not wrong. I used to be very like, try to correct my accent right now. I'm just like so proud. Uh, so I totally recommend the same feeling. But I, I just wanted to make the point about the hiring team perspective, because we also need to prepare for that, given the global remote uh, environment that we have right now, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, you also talked about like uh, practicing in front of the mirror. Do you have any, I don't know, I'm just like asking now, but there, are, there is a lot of like business work lingual um so maybe ways that you can also try to learn some specific words for your job or for the job you're applying i don't know one thing that i'm thinking now is like the expression back to back like i i am back to back with meetings and that's something that doesn't exist in portuguese but it's a business lingo so maybe trying to find some expressions that are very specific to your uh, job or the job you're applying can help show that you actually know vocabulary as well, as well. I don't know what you think about that. I think that worked a lot with me was I, I was interested in that industry and then I always researched about the, my interests in English and mainly because there was no good material in Portuguese 15 years ago when I started, so. Oh, wait, we, we can't hear you for some reason. Yeah. Or is it me only? No, we can't. Can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. now, yes. I, I, I always needed to make uh, my connection, I got a problem. Uh, we can hear you. I, I, I needed to to make researches because of the, the good sources were in English. So I always needed to study in English. Uh, so uh, a good thing that worked to me was if you're interested in an area, research about that area in English. If you're interested, interested on, on, about singing, go watch America's Got Talent or X Factor but make a research in English. In, on the internet, you will find easily material to read and, and listen in English about whatever area you want to learn. So you will be making something that is really relevant to you and using the English, not just pressing yourself to learn the language, but using it as a tool to achieve your goals. I think it's a great way to learn. Also, uh, coming back what you said, Gabby, about the, the expressions, I believe that uh, interviews are also a learning instance. We can learn a lot going to interviews and start knowing first the expressions and then start using them back to back. Let me ping you. I don't have any expressions in Spanish let, let me ping you, you know, what is that? Um, and many other expressions that we can, we can learn by going into interviews and, and then we can start using it. We can actually um, appropriate those expressions and uh, start using them, you know, that's a, a very good also learning instance. That's a great point. Thank you so much. And now it's just like a broadening, um, trying to make it broader a little bit. We talked about like the second language. Now thinking about remote interviews in general. Uh, do you have any tips, things that worked, didn't work in order to prepare for a specific remote job interview? Maria, I will ask you first. Well, you know, remote interviews has pretty much the the same preparation that we have with a face-to-face -face interview, but it had some differences. You know, after COVID, 
we start using it more and we realize that this is the new way to make interviews. So it has come to stay. Remote interviews will stay. Um, and we need to take a special consideration some important things that could help us succeed in the interview or the opposite. For example, your internet connection. That is something that is crucial. Okay, without a good internet connection, interview is not going to be a success. We need to make sure that we do have a great internet connection. We need to make sure that the place that we choose to have the interview have a good signal. We need to make sure about the light, okay? Not too much light in front of you, not little light. Exactly. Thank you, Joao. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love yeah. this well. Please. Yeah. We, we we have to also think about that. We need to um we need to make sure that we don't have any distractions. For example, if I am uh in the middle of an interview, I cannot have people crossing the room on my back, or I cannot be in a I don't know, I cannot have on my back a very big uh picture that is distracting the interviewer. Um, I need to dress correctly. Remember that we are in a job interview, so we cannot wear pajamas. We need to, to dress correctly, at least from the top. We have to, yeah, we have to dress, you know, at the bottom, you can, you can wear flip-flop if you want, but at the top, you have to to dress correctly. Um, and we need to also make sure that, as I said before, we don't have any distractions and we don't have people, noises. Uh, if we live near to an avenue, I live near to an avenue and it's very, very noisy. So if I have to make a call with a client, I have to go to another place, a quiet one. Um, so those are very important tips that um, actually will help you to succeed during a, a remote interview. Um, on the other hand, we'll still have to work as we were in a, in a face-to-face -face interview, like, you know, uh, being nice, being polite, show enthusiasm, excitement, do research before going to the interview, all those things that we already know that has to be present in a face-to-face -face interview in a remote interview. But with remote interview, we need to make sure uh, also to know what tool the client is going to use. For example, we are at Zoom right now. Uh, if you do not have a Zoom account, you need to go into Zoom, register, try Zoom before going to the real interview. You can actually talk to a friend, a family member, a colleague. You need to try to try the sound. You need to try your computer settings. You need to make sure that you, your microphone is working correctly. Uh, I usually recommend headphones, headsets, I'm sorry, uh, because sometimes the, the computer uh, microphone is not that loud. So you have to test that before going to the real interview and make sure that everything is ready and prepared for you to succeed during the interview. Joan, do you have anything to add? Maria covered. I, I, I heard some very interesting tips like one that Maria, I thought Maria was about to mention that is, once I read somewhere about wear pants, because sometimes the interview may include standing up and you need <laughs> to wear something below your waist. Really serious. It's I never like, heard about that. Okay, yeah, in some occasions. Maybe not in technology, we don't have dynamics standing up. So, but uh, you need to be sure you can stand up in front of camera cause accidents can happen uh, and uh, in my interview i had a, a moment that i was interrupted because 
my family was having an issue about my son was starting the classes in the school remotely and i needed to get out and go check his network connection i, I needed to leave for a moment and uh, well the point is uh, wear correctly don't get out get up from your bed with your with a terrible hair try yourself as you want they they try uh, the, uh, treat yourself i mean the way you want them to treat you and another very smart tip i got uh, to was about the, the connection delay we have some delay in the may have some delay in the connection in, in your network so some uh, a, a, a good way to make sure the delay is not annoying to the to you and the interviewer is to use some some verbal aggregators like um uh, um uh, yeah or wh while you are thinking to not give the the impression that you ended your talking and they should try to talk back and answer you so that uh, this way you you make sure you won't be in that oh so sorry oh hell because it's anno very <laughs> annoying when you are facing some delay and you can avoid that terrible moments and <laughs> make the the interview smoother does it make sense from a interviewer point of view it's tough yeah. It does. I would just yeah. say it like uh, inter it, and actually that will kind of like I will add another question because we have different types of interviews, right? We have interviews. There are like screenings. It's 15 minutes, super quick. So the answers like have to be very objective so we can cover everything. Everybody can cover everything. And we have one two hours long interviews. So maybe just to add that because Yes, you can take a lot of uh, lo longer times and longer answers for some types of interviews, but other types of interviews, you have to be super straightforward. Does that make sense from a candidate perspective? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. <laughs> Another thing, Gavi, that someone mentioned on the chat and that's very important is punctuality. You know, we don't have to make the interviewer wait for us, okay? If we're using a platform, we can be Zoom, for example, we can be uh, there and wait for the interviewer, okay? Yeah. If we're showing up late to an interview, we're just started wrong, just simple wrong. Yeah, that's a great point. So, okay, you'd say like the gear, like remote work gear, internet, headset, microphone, all that preparing the answers and also making sure that just making sure you have if you have a delayed internet you will keep going with your train of thought so nobody interrupts you and being on time i'll just add one last thing which is things happen right accidents happen you might have to leave the interview you might have to be late you might have to reschedule just the way like sometimes if the interviewers also have. So I'd say like also bottom line is just like set the right expectations with the person who you schedule time with. If something happens on your end, email them, like don't be shy. It's better to let them know that something happened. Even if you're dropping off the process, let them know. So it's just setting up the right expectations and you don't leave anybody like waiting for you. Same way goes to the interviewers, all right? I'm not saying that's only for candidates. Um, okay, yeah. So moving a little bit forward, because um, we have a lot of things and I want to save time for the QA. Thinking about the difference, okay, I'll start here. Is, is it clear like hard skills, soft skills, and we have different ways of showing them and focusing in different types of skills. 
So, what do you thinking about that? Do you have any analyzing the market now, the type of jobs you deal with, uh, the type of jobs you apply for? Do you see any specific hard skills that right now are interesting or people should be focusing on inside the technology industry? And Joan, I will start with you with that. If the answer, is the question clear? Sorry. As I, as I, I understand, yeah, it's clear. I understand that um, the companies are not just expecting you to know how to write React code or um, even JavaScript code, pure JavaScript code. Uh, they are trying to find out people that are good to understand the problems. That is the great uh, hard skill that will never change. You need to be good to understand the problems you are trying to solve before uh, making choices on how to solve the problem. Uh, that is the most important skill you can think in technology or in bakery or in fashion, whatever. You need to think about understanding what they want uh, in, in the problem. When they give you a test, it's not just about uh, making a great uh, formula, uh, mathematical formula, to, to give a great answer uh, fast. But uh, one thing that I, I'm sure I made very good in my interview to enter Foursquare was talk to the interviewer about the problem and make the mistakes and show the mistakes you are making while trying to find out the solution. Because the interviewer, I felt the interviewer was uh, feeling uh, that, that chemical word, I don't know the best word. Uh, he was uh, uh, liking to talk, to in interact with me about the problem. And there was a, a great conversation, not just uh, a student trying to write something in the board. I was really, really interested in the problem and uh, not afraid of making mistakes, just showing the mistake and having from him uh, some feedback. Uh, I, I, I'm falling into soft skills actually, I know, but they they cannot be separate they are unfairly separated because you cannot separate the soft skills in the real world in the real uh, uh, execution of the of your work so uh understanding the 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 technologies and knowing how to make choices how to make decisions about solving problems it's the the most important uh, of all hard skills more than knowing javascript python ruby or rust right and and someone that i um there's something that i saw a lot during the interviews especially in the ones that have tests is that uh the client is looking for getting into your mindset. How do you approach the exercise? Uh, what is the logic that you are using to make that exercise? It could be wrong, okay? You cannot get to the correct result. But if you're like speaking aloud when you are making the exercise, and as Joao said, recognizing if there is an issue, what was the issue, and if the client could see that, what is the, the, the logic that you are using to approach to uh, the resolution? That's something that is really valuable for, for the client, not just your hard 
technical stack, no? your, your hard knowledge. Yeah, that's a great point. And that also connects with like types of interviews. I'm going back to that again, I know, but because um, these are like types of interviews with like technical problem solving or pair programming exercises, live exercises, that even for those which would be super focused on hard skills in theory, even on those cases, interviewers are also looking to soft skills like that. Are you able to communicate what you're doing? Are you able to talk about the mistakes you do? Because you will do mistakes for sure, uh, right? That, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's still, I will still, I know you don't like it, Joel, but I'll talk about hard and soft. Um, if, we, if we talk about soft skills and if you could choose one, uh, I'm getting the sense it would be communication, but I'm not sure. So if you could choose one soft skills to focus on in 2022, what would it be? Do you, uh, I have one thing that they are always uh, 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 giving me as a feedback on my team. That is, you are great making questions. You, you are doing a great progress because you know what you want to know, what you know and what you don't know about because you're you're making questions in text in in the meetings in video calls or email or chat where wherever you can you communicate your questions and i i already told them that my my great gift is making questions make questions be able to make great questions because uh, it's been a, a thing that they told me been a great thing I done today just today uh, in the meeting I made a lot of questions and asked for more time in the meeting just to show what I was trying to make and made a lot of questions during all the day in ch on chat and during the meeting in video and after that my senior engineer told me i'm glad you made a lot of questions because i think you can make the others uh, feeling more comfortable to make their own questions too and then i answer, answered her uh, I, I'm glad about that because I really wish to be an inspiration. So uh, if uh, I could make a, 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 to point a thing that you want, you can show by communicating well, you can show to the interviewer, could be to passion, a purpose. You are not just willing to to earn more money you you are not uh, deluded to change the world but you are not just willing more money you want to make something because you feel it's your way you know who you are uh, having a passion can make you show naturally uh, uh, your questions that you are interested in the problems, in the technology, in the company, because you have a purpose there, because you really want a, a thing bigger in your life, not just in, their po in that position, but in your life, you want a bigger thing. Be a dreamer, have a passion, because it will make you show that to people, even when you are not trying you will communicate well because you are interested that that could be a good thing to invest for the whole life for 2021 22 and forever thank you maria do you have a favorite yeah, yeah well uh just to choose one is very difficult you know um 
But I, I will say I'm aligned with, with Joao. Every time that I, I talk to a talent and I wanted to present to a client, what I ask the talent to do is to prepare. What does it mean? I provide the URL of the website and I ask the talent to go into the website, check on the industry, check what the client does, and be ready to ask questions about the industry, about what the client is doing, questions about the technology they're using, question about the project. That's, that's really important because it, it shows that you care about the, the client that you are um, going to. It shows that you are interested. Uh, be curious, be proactive. Um, be polite, always with a smile. It sounds silly, but it's not the same going to a meeting serious, like with a beautiful smile, like the one that Joao is showing us right now. So um, try to um, do some small talk at the beginning of the conversation. Uh, try to uh, understand what the client is doing, what the client is trying to approach and align that to your personal goals, right? Um, so all those soft skills, all, all those qualities for me are, are really important when going in an interview. Um, it is hard to choose just one, but of course, uh, communication and proactiveness for me are both key. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think just to, I think we can jump into the QA, Oscar. I'm, I'm not, I don't even know if there are questions. If we have any questions, please feel free to ask now. Um, I just want to wrap up what both of you said, saying as a candidate, you are also choosing, right? So, uh, uh, things that Maria said, especially Juan too, like understand the company, uh, asking the questions to the, the interviewer, getting the answers you need is so important too, because it's your choice as well. Um, and us as a company, of course, now I'm talking about like from Andela's and from the hiring team perspective, we have to be aware of that because we want you to be part of our team, right? So it's just like, uh, two-way street. I don't know if that's the right expression, but you got it, right? All right, uh, Sky. Do do we have any questions from the the group? Yeah, there's there's one question which I think it's 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 one it's one of the topics that we outlined before before this talk, which is the difference, like for interviewing, like for the act actually interviewing. Uh, for a smaller company or just like a, a normal company to an industry leading, like, you know, like Joao, you had experience, like Logitech is one industry leading company. So are there no nuances that you have to consider when, when being like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, I don't want to sound uh, like I'm that, I don't have the right word right now, but I don't want to make, I don't want to look like I'm making uh, uh, another like uh, a, a smaller effort than the other one. I think both are important, but I think having an interview between like an industry leading like or, or a small agency from your for your hometown is different. So how, how what what can be some advice that we could give someone that got an interview to a big company? Uh, I, I could say, uh, being an interview for a great company, uh, uh, market leading company, is more comfortable because they want they know what they want because they have planned the interview. Uh, I I made a lot of interviews for small and local companies, and that that were like. Hey, hello, John. How you doing? You wanna have like a, a, a thousand more for working for us? What you think? Can you come here and talk about your family? How you doing? These six months we don't talk, and we can 
be sure uh, you, we can pay how much you want to to leave your current job. It's like less organized. The small companies are are not planning well what they want with the interview. The the big companies, the interesting companies, uh, know very well what they want to make. They have a well planned process and they are clear about how is it gonna be. If the company is not very clear, maybe it's a red alert about uh, being worried or you can go ahead and make, take the, the dare you to move to start more conversation. But the, the big companies, uh, we'll try to, in, in the big companies, the interviewers will try to make sure they, they get you comfortable to talk about yourself and uh, explain your story and share your experience. They really will to wait if you have a problem. If you communicate, I need to to postpone this interview because I had an accident. I had another thing. I had a family problem or whatever. They will make it happen in the other day, in the next opportunity they can. Because uh, in my experience, that's been the great difference. Great companies are great. And they are great interviewing, contacting you and explaining you the, the process and giving you uh, uh, the opportunity to, to show your, your potential to them. I'm going to, I'm going to start up a little bit here to talk about the, the small companies. You know, I'm working in an SMB team, which is small and medium uh, business. We do have another team that is working uh, with enterprise, uh, which large company, as just Joel mentioned. Um, there, there are some differences in indeed. I wouldn't say one is the best and one is the worst. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. But in, in so many cases, we, uh, in small companies, they don't have, they don't define well the, the role. And maybe you, you start like a front-end engineer and ended up doing a full-stack job or just start working in a small team with not too much direction. Um, it's not always, of course. There are some small company that are very sure about what they're looking for and they have a defined project and they go for what they need and, and it's perfectly defined. But the, the, the interview process is also a little bit different. Uh, small company usually don't have an HR department. So there are not many instances for interview. They're usually the CEO or the hiring manager, the one that is conducting the interview. And you just have a 60 minute interview and that's it. Then you have the feedback and you're in or not. Uh, with big companies, sometimes you have many instances. You have an interview with the HR department, then a second interview with a the manager. Then you may have a third interview. Uh, so. There are differences and it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to work in a big company where, where you are going to be one more of a big team, or if you wanna work for a small company where your work can have maybe more visibility because you work in a team of three people, for example, uh, so it depends on what you're looking for, okay? There are differences, of course, there are, but both are great. Depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I think oh, I, I should take a, a step back here because I, I was talking with bad experiences in mind. So uh, I, I have to say small companies uh, doesn't need to be bad companies. Okay, so I understand the differences 
have a, a meaning. Uh, when you have a small company, you have a, a, a reason for being a small company and for the process that are different. Uh, but my experiences were bad, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 like there are good and bad companies like of all sizes, right? Uh, I'll, 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 there's a great question coming from Rodrigo Nogueira. Uh, and, and let's see if we can do it like super fast. But I, I think that we could add value to the community if we can give an inside view of the type of questions or problems you get to, to be solved or, 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 or information that you need to provide when doing like this, like you, you mentioned them, like Maria, like that, like when you get in, interviewed by HR, what are the kind of different, what, in your experience, what is the type of in, questions you get to get to ask? Or once you get to the manager, what, what kind of problem did you get to solve? This is a question coming from Rodrigo. Uh, well, usually there, there are two types of uh, interviews, the cultural one and then the, the technical interview. When you go with the HR, the cultural interview, by cultural, I mean that they ask you general questions about your previous experience. They test your English level. Um, they want to know about how you handle some situations, general situations in your past uh, previous uh, job experience. There is more general what you do, what you expect from life, what are your goals? Um, you know, th those kinds of questions are, uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? You know, that, that kind of questions. And then you have the, the technical one, which usually is with the higher manager or the CEO, or, or the team leader, uh, where you have to show your knowledge, your technical knowledge. It could be an assessment. Uh, it could be just technical questions. Uh, they could ask you to share your screen and start writing the code. Um, that will be strictly technical and you will have to show all your hard skills in that one. For Rodrigo too, I think that was like, a, I love the difference that you made, uh, Maria, because that also connects with soft and hard skills that I know Joan doesn't like the separation. <laughs> but, um, always connected. Yeah, it's always connected. But even for the sake of organization, when you're doing the hiring process, you need to like, anyways. Uh, but Rodrigo, one thing that I would say too is like, just make sure that you understand what, what is your next interview? So you can prepare for that interview. There are so many different types within the division Maria said, like for HR, we have pre-screening, we have life story interviews, like in-depth interviews for candidates. On the technical side, we have whiteboard, pair programming, technical solving, technical problem solving, like make sure that you know as, as best as you can who you're gonna talk to, what type of interview, so you can prepare for that one. If it's more technical, prepare to answer questions about impact that you have with your technical skills. Let's say you are a developer. So what type of impact have you produced? Uh, how long it takes for you to launch something? How complex is that launch? How, how deeply can you understand the architecture of the system and so on? If the interview will be more on the cultural side that Maria said, make sure that you understand your own past. Like what type of impacts did you have in your own career? The career change that you made, why did you make them? So I would divide that way and just like try as best as you can to understand your next step with the hiring process. So you prepare for that one. Um, and I will use your division, your separation, Maria, I loved it. I, I think like, actually, uh, adding... I'm, I'm sorry, just a, a quick thing. There is actually uh, our job as a matcher. My job is to also help the candidates to prepare for the interview. So we're here to help the candidates. That's a great point. As Andela, we have a team helping exactly. the talent to prepare for the interviews. 
That's a great. Fact. I think Oscar yeah. will probably like connect that with the wrap up. Nice bracelet, uh, Joao. Yeah, like like I think it it's I, it happened to me in the past, like uh, not having the great bracelet, uh, not having the, the the time to reflect on why we took decisions over the past, and that's something that you get guess asked, right? Like you're gonna to start thinking uh, uh, or be more conscious about it, right? But I, we have three more questions. I want to see oh more questions. Uh, and you saw it already, Gabriela, but uh, why would we go with the recommendations about like how to increase your uh, visibility on Andela database? That, that the, the question is that Magdalena is making. Like, how, do you, how can you give us ideas about how to efficiently load your information to Andela database to gain visibility? Do you want to take that, Joao? I didn't get a question, sorry. <laughs> how? Oh, no, I, well, I, I think Maria, if you can take it because I, yes. I think it's like, like, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> first of all, don't lie. Don't lie when putting information in your resume, okay? Just, um, we have a, our, our page at Tendela, our um, database when we list all our candidate skills. Yeah. It's very intuitive. It's, it's very easy to use. Um, we ask the candidate just to put a summary of the work history and then go step by step with the job history and the technical skills that they have. Um, and just keep it simple. Just put what you do, what you are good at. Um, I know that Magdalena also ask about certifications, if it's important to add certifications or it's more important to have experience. I believe that both are important, but experience, in my understanding is that experience, it's always uh, better than having a lot of certifications. Um, you can put your certifications, of course, and that will give you a lot of value, but just put your skills, the, the job that you have done, the years of experience, the years of hands of experience, not only what you uh, theoretically know, but what you have practiced, what you have done in the past. Um, as I said before, Mayandela, which is uh, the database where we have all our talents, uh, is really easy to use and it has listed all the skills, so it won't be difficult to, to put it in there. It's a great tool, actually. I don't know if that answered your questions. I hope it did. Like we're, we're we we have reached the the the, the top of the hour. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, so yeah, and 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 she's confirming that you just answered her question. So I'm gonna take over here just to wrap it up. I wanna first thank you. Gabi, Maria, uh, Joao, for, for your time and effort you put into, into, into setting this up. And I really appreciate all of your help on, on getting this. But I'm going to be wrapping up. Just give me just one second. I want to just share my screen very quickly. Uh, 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 so before, uh, sorry, I'll interrupt you, Oscar. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Before people start to leave or anything, I just want to thank everybody's time. And I want to make myself available. I know we didn't have enough time to cover all the questions. You can, uh, if you're not in our community Slack yet, you can contact me uh, directly on LinkedIn. Uh, please just ask to connect, ask your question, whatever you need from us. We also have Romina in the chat. He, she is from our team at Talent Acquisition. She's a great talent sourcer. I'm sure she's available for questions as well if you need if you have any about how to join and the best way to join the, the marketplace. So that's it, Oscar. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Gabby, for the closing remarks. Uh, and well, I'll I'll take it from here. And yes, please reach out if you have any questions. But you will have also another opportunity uh, that I will be talking about that. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank also all of the Andelas involved in the production of this. And I want you to extend you an invitation for a coming webinar, which is going to be taking place on December 9 at 11 a.m. Eastern time. 
uh, is with James Welton, a co-founder of the Coder Dojo. And he's going to be talking about his journey from software engineer to founder. You can miss this one. And I just uh, want to thank you. There's a link for you to register, uh, or you can just go and check us our, our social media accounts. But if you go to bit.ly slash uh, journey uh, uh, to founder underscore in between each of the words, uh, uh, you can get there and register already for, for this amazing talk. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, the audience, for being here and for showing up. Uh, we, we will have more content for you and see you around later. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.